equipment and a crew of specialists perfectly synchronized as they capture the Cooper and Anthony show. More exciting action. Action. Let's listen in. Most of the time when I sit on the bus, I space out or I listen to podcasts, of course, hours first, always. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, other podcasts and things like things like that. Um, and I just space out and I don't really pay attention to the people around me. But there were these two girls that were standing right next to me and because it was a crowded bus. And I was really fascinated by them. So they were high school girls. So that's like, you know, Gen Z. And one of them had said to the other, she was like being so honest with her. She goes, you know, I'm afraid to say things to you because you always judge me. And before I even talk to you, there's so many times that I think, what will Amanda say if I said X, Y, and Z? Or what's Amanda going to think? Or is she going to make me feel bad for asking her about, you mm. know, whatever? She's like, and I feel like sometimes I'm afraid to talk to you. And then I'm like, well, if I'm afraid to talk to you, how are we best friends? And the girl was like, of course we're best friends. And she's like, but if we're best friends, I shouldn't be afraid to talk to you. And she's like, yeah, but that's kind of, they were like teenagers. They were like 14, 15 years old having this like really intense friendship conversation. And it was so honest, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, there was not a lot of emotion. It was very like factual. It was like, well, how are we best friends then? She's like, you know what? We should do a TikTok about this no. because I think we, I think we can help. I think we can help other people because I think there's other friends that probably feel the same way where they're like, I'm afraid to say this to my friend, and you know, you can explain why you're afraid to talk to me and what you know why you think I'm a bitch to you. And they were like, kind of laughing about it in a way, and and they pulled out their phones and they were making like a TikTok about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was interesting because. It really shows the difference between the generations. I, my generation, we didn't care enough about other people. Like, there's nothing that would happen that I'd be like, "Oh, we should, we should make this a learning experience. This is a teachable moment for others." You know, that's a that was a non-starter for my friends and I. Like, we had no interest. We could care less what other people thought. Mm -hmm. Like, we were not we were not looking to help other people. So I thought that was interesting. And then the kid sitting next to me with his, I think his nanny, I hate to be like that, but it was a kid and his nanny. The kid was like 10. And the nanny said to him, asked him a question. And he looked at her straight in the eye and he said, now make sure you want to ask me that question because I don't think you're going to like the answer. <laughs> Where is this I, coming from? I was like, is he 40? Like, who? what, what 10 year old speaks that way? So, of course, I was like, okay, I understand the girls. I'm done with them now. I'm moving on to the 10-year-old. I want to hear this conversation. And it was really interesting how the way he was talking to his nanny, who was obviously older than he was, he was talking like he was the adult. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me, of course, because so many kids spend so much time with their parents and their parents' friends, and their friends' parents, and they do everything together as a group. And like like our generation, we could not wait to get away from our parents. You know, like the second you had a night out, remember I had a, I had that ladder. I used to climb out my window and sneak mm -hmm. out my window and, and escape every chance I got. Gen Z and whatever the 10-year-old generation is, but I don't know what the next one's gonna be called. Generation new, whatever it is. Yeah, right. They don't want to leave their parents. They, not, only, not only are they into hanging out with their parents, they talk like them because they spend so much time with adults. Remember, this is the generation that calls their friends' parents by their first names and has no qualms. Like nobody says, Mr. Michaels. Like they'd call you Anthony. No, I, I think kids spend no time with their parents, zero time, and they spend... Their parent now is YouTube. Oh, okay. I think they spend, well, I don't think they spend, I know they spend all their waking moments on YouTube. I think right. my kids have watched all of YouTube at this point. They've learned how to do everything there is to do. You uh -huh. learn how to cook. You learn how to talk. You learn everything. Because back when we were growing up, we didn't have none of that. We had to figure it no, out on no. our own. We had to talk yeah. to friends. Now, they don't even talk to friends. They don't talk to you. They, they just sit there on their phone nonstop. If I walked downstairs and walked into Christopher's room right now, he would be on YouTube. Guarantee it. 
That's his parent. That's his dad. That, his, that is his nanny. That is his <laughs> <laughs> father, mother, all that. That's where they learn. That's their teacher. That's their uh-huh. employer. That's where they learn everything is on that YouTube. But that maybe they're watching adults then and not kids their own age. I, I have to explain why. It's not the first time that I've seen somebody who's like 10 years old or younger who speaks like an adult speaks and uses phrases that like my grandmother uses. You know, there's words that I would never say because they're too grandma-ish. And I see kids all the time that are like, you know, golly jeepers or whatever, the, whatever grandmas. I don't know what grandmas say anymore, but like. <laughs> You know, gr- grandma stuff. Like, they talk like little adults. It's the weirdest thing. Now, we used to talk like movies. Whatever movie that we watched, we would talk like Airplane. There's been a little problem in the cockpit. The know? cockpit? What is it? It's the little room in the front of the plane where the pilots sit. That's not important right now. So now they talk like whatever they're watching. So they're watching YouTube videos with adults. They have to be with watching adults. adults because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very weird. I see it with my friends and their kids. You know, they have like real relationships with their kids where they're they're a parent, but they also like have real conversations with them. I mean, to this day, I don't know what my mother's up to. Like one day she just shows up and she's like, by the way, we're moving to Florida or by the way, there's no conversation. There's no we're thinking about this. There's no, hey, heads up. You know, my mother's not moving to Florida. But I'm just giving mm-hmm. an example. Whereas... I find like my friends with their kids who are 10 years old and younger, they have full on conversations about like, hey, you know, we're thinking about painting the house. What color do you like? Who the hell cares what a 10 year old likes? But no, my friends really want, they want the kids input. Yeah. And your mom and your relationship has never changed. They've always, she's always been that way. Right. So it's not like she's different now than she was 30 years ago. She didn't ask your opinion 30 years ago. No, I don't know that she knew my name until I was like 18. I didn't even know she li- she didn't know I lived in the house till I was 18. <laughs> yeah. So, I think they're not learning it from friends. They're they learn how to drive a stick shift on YouTube. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas we would steal our parents' car. That's and how we, we would have to figure it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> on our own or or hope that Joe knew. And Joe was my friend who was 2 years older and that's where I learned everything from and Joe was just as dumb as anybody else. <laughs> but you know, and so I did a little bit of a deeper dive into it because after having the experience where I was watching these two 14, 15-year-olds who were very into taking their relationship issue out into the public to try to help others and also to kind of figure out their own, you know, navigate their own relationship, which again, is something that my friends and I would have never done. Um, I took a, like a little bit of a deeper dive on social media because I was interested to see like, what really are the differences in our generation? Like, cause everybody makes jokes about boomer versus millennial and then you got Gen X, who's in the middle, who does, doesn't care about anything. You know, you and I are weird because we're in between Gen X and millennial. We don't really have a generation. Like, we're, the, we're sort of like floaters, mm-hmm. you know? So I was really interested. And I was kind of looking to see. And I think I figured it out. He, here's how I, social media really tells the difference between generations in terms of, um, like, who they are and how they feel emotionally. So my parents' generation, you know, boomers, whatever, they were like, if you look at pictures of them, they're not very emotional. It's very like people just standing there, you know, or like everybody looked perfect, whatever you're wearing. We only took pictures at weddings. Like nobody took pictures just doing stuff unless it was like a barbecue or a cruise or somebody was doing something fabulous. You know, no one just took a picture on like a Tuesday having a sandwich, You know, it was always like every family photograph that I see from my mom's childhood, they were all like, it was a reason, you know, it was like a christening or a bar mitzvah or something like that, you know. (laughs) So they were like, they were really like an arm's distance, like emotionally, it was just, here's a family. How do they feel about each other? We don't know. It's just a family. We have no idea. And then you have Gen X where we didn't want anyone to know anything about us. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
don't ask me anything. Here's a picture of my pink toenail. Here's a picture of a friend of mine holding a joint. Here's a photo of my food. Right, yeah. There's no no explanation. It's none of your fucking business um, who I'm dating. There's no pictures. Like, even now, if you go to my social media, you would never know that I had a boyfriend. There's not one photograph of me and my boyfriend where I'm like, this is my wonderful boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And then in the description, like, you know, in the caption or the any description underneath the picture, like on Instagram, I didn't I have nothing written. I would have nothing written there. It wouldn't say like, you know, I thought I was going to be single my whole life. And then I was blessed and met this hashtag inspo, you know, nothing. There's none of that. None. Mm -hmm. Zero. Then you get millennials where they're more like. Here we all are, and we're so loving, and everything's great, and here's my fun friends, and we all look so good, and like, here's my cute dress, and and here's a cute little sandwich that I'm eating, and, and oh, isn't this coffee look delicious, and here's my amazing friend who I love so much, hashtag crew, hashtag inspo, hashtag, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, and they're really into letting us think that their lives are wonderful and perfect, and look at my makeup, and isn't this a great outfit, and look how happy we are. But then you get the Gen Z kids who are like, life sucks, we acknowledge it, but here's how we're going to make it better. Do I mean like they're, they're not, they're not millennials where life is not good for them. Mm -hmm. It's very honest, but they're young. So they're still kind of hopeful, but they're also, they're closer to boomers in that way where they're just like. You know what I mean? Like they, they're a little more negative. I don't know. I just feel like you look at social media and you could tell if you show me a social media post and gave me no context, I can tell you whether the person is 14 or 64. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But could you tell if they're 34? Yes. So 14, 34 and 64. That would be a good contest. Who tweeted this? Ooh. yeah, we'll have to work on that. And I'll, okay. I'll test you with that. We'll do that next time. Okay. And we'll that's, a good, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, because I see like my, my millennial friends that are like smack dab in the middle of millennial. They're always like, isn't my baby cute? Look at this wonderful vacation. Look at how cute my new car is. Like their life is so perfect. Everything's great, even though it's so not true. Mm-hmm. And then the Gen Z kids I know are like, oh, I'm full of anxiety to him having the worst day. I have like an exam and my best friend's not talking to me and oh, well, that's life. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you go to somebody's page, you don't know how old they are. You don't know if they're married. You don't know if they're dating. You don't know where they live. (laughs) It's just them up there. Right. But I think if you go to my page, you could tell I'm somewhere in the middle because there are some millennial type post where it's like here's me and my fabulous friends and we're on a great boat or we're doing something fabulous and then there's like pictures of me with a celebrity and no context whatsoever Mm. and no and and you wouldn't know if i was dating anybody you know what i mean like i just feel like i feel like social media really reveals your generation yeah we'll have to do that next time i'll give you a bunch of examples and you'll have to tell me if they're old young or how old they are You'll have to also tell me what, how they spelled things and if there's a, any punctuation. Uh, and any, any, any hashtags, because if my parents put anything on social, they're not going to hashtag. They're, they're, right. They, they don't know what that is. Right. And most of my friends who have like Gen Z kids, I've noticed like their kids, they don't use punctuation. They definitely do not use a period because that's a full stop and it's very like, it's aggressive. Mm-hmm. So if you look at their tweets, there's like almost no punctuation. Yeah. Now when I send emails, I go back and I actually take out one of the spaces between the period and the next letter because (laughs) I always put two spaces up a period, two spaces. Then I start the next sentence because that's what we learned in high school. Uh But now they don't, nobody does that. So you can really tell somebody's age just by how many spaces they put between the period and the next letter. They taught you that in high school? Yeah, when in typing class. Oh, I never took typing class. I never learned that. My high school didn't have that kind of stuff. See, and that tells so much <laughs> because I was at, my son and I were actually talking about it because he hurt his shoulder, so he can't uh-huh. type with two hands. He only can type with one. And I said, yeah. you're, you're just like Cooper. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I said, and she doesn't use her whole hand. She just uses a finger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she just packs. I use two fingers. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. She just packs. That's all she does. So you're no different than she is. And I love when people are always like, that's how you type. I'm like, fuck you. I wrote seven books like this. With one finger. (laughs) You should see how she holds a pen. (laughs) That's even stranger. But then there's that other half of me. So I have, I started a new job this week and I was taking notes. So I was in, you know, the note program, the, the note app on my phone. And I was just banging away with my thumbs. And the guy was like, don't you want a pen and paper? I was like, for what? He's like, to take notes. I'm like, I'm taking notes. What do you think? I'm <laughs> texting my friends. Like, what do you think is going on over here? He goes, I'm much faster when I write with a pen. I was like, well, great. Then when I train you, <laughs> you can use a pen. But right now, and I do have to explain to him that, first of all, I am way faster using my thumbs and a keyboard and a iPhone because I don't even have to look at the keyboard. I can just, I just... As he's talking, I'm like watching him and typing at the same time. I can't do that if I write. I got to look when I'm writing. You know what I mean? Like I can't write without looking. And then um, from boxing last year, when I was getting really into boxing, I injured my right forearm. So it actually hurts when I pick up a pen. So I haven't picked up a pen in like over a year Mm -hmm. because when I write, it hurts my ulna, radius, whatever's in your forearm. So I'm not only way more comfortable and not and will never be in pain using my thumbs it's i'm way faster that would drive me insane if i was training somebody and they were typing on their phone i would think that they're texting and not paying me any attention that would drive me crazy yeah i feel like that and there's a generational difference right there because if the guy that was training me was 30 he wouldn't think twice about it right you know and the fact and i and i said to him at one point he was telling me something and I was on my phone and I was like, wait, can you slow down? He's like, you're taking notes. I'm like, what the fuck do you think I'm doing over here? Yeah, you're on Twitter. <laughs> That's what you're doing over there. I'm on there. Twitter while you're training me? Yeah. My kid's no. on Twitter when he's walking across the street. Well, because he's walking across the street, but if he's at work. <laughs> no, but if he's at work and somebody's training him and he's got to pay attention, he's not going to be on Twitter. They're going to be on YouTube. I guarantee they're going to be watching the video. Uh-huh. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I'm on YouTube. I know. It's so funny. It's like I, I was thinking that like as the guy was training me, I'm like, isn't there a YouTube for this? Like, what? <laughs> what do I have to sit here? <laughs> Why I got to come in for three nights in a row? Don't you, can't you have this on YouTube yet? Don't you have a video of this? The very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. Because you are a mean girl. You're a bitch. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. You do not drive. You do not own a car. You don't own a driver's license. There's no reason in New York to have a car or driver's license. Definitely not. No. So you are one of these people when you get a car warning light on your dashboard of a car. Do you know what these lights mean? No, of course. You're kidding. Car warning light. No. What is that even? So you uh, you would have no idea. So we're going to do a little contest here to see how well you know your car warning lights, because I don't think you know any of them. No, I didn't know there were car warning lights. I thought cars are all computerized right now, and they have a problem. They tell you. Well, they're also going to have a warning light. That's the thing. Okay, so what does this symbol mean? The answer is check engine light. Do I have choices? A or? helicopter approaching. Oh. Engine management. Fuel tank issue. Or sat nav connection error. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Okay, so here's the thing. The icon you're showing me does look like a helicopter approaching, but why would that be on my dashboard? Because how often do you have a helicopter approaching? But you would need to know, and the car knows. Well, it looks like a helicopter, but I don't think that's what it is. Um, is it an engine management symbol? Oy. Is it a fuel tank leak? Or is it a sat nav connection error? Oh, God. I, I have no idea. I can't even guess. Okay, if it popped up, what are you going to do? Look up and make sure there's no helicopter. Okay, you're thinking it's a helicopter. Yeah, helicopter approaching. All right, no. It's engine management. It's a check what? engine light. Yeah, you have... If this light pops up on your car, you pull over immediately and stop the car. 
Okay, why wouldn't it just say the words check engine? Why it gotta put a stupid symbol up there? Next, if you see this. The answer is tire pressure warning. What is it? Is it low tire pressure? Boot weight is too heavy. Unknown object unknown object inside engine bay or roof is loose. Um, it looks like a pregnant woman. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's going to be uh, boot weight, which is the the boot is the trunk in America. So the, the trunk is too heavy because it looks like a heavy woman and there's an ex- there's an exclamation point in the middle of it. It's a low tire. What? That's not even a tire. What is that even? You're failing on this. Okay, diesel drivers, what is this? The answer is glow plug warning light. Who knows? Suspension error, curvy road ahead, tangled horseshoe in the car, or glow plug warning light? It's just squiggly lines. What is it? Suspension, curvy road, horseshoe, or glow plug? No glow plug. Correct. Good job. You got one right. A, well, it was a guess because it's yellow and it's glowing. And what is a glow plug? I have you no see. idea. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. idea. If you see this symbol, the answer is top off oil. Oh god. What do okay. you do immediately? Do you top off the washer fluid? Do you top off the oil? Top off the water? Or top off the gas? All right, so it looks like a watering can. Mm-hmm. But why would you have to water a car? So it's probably gas. It needs gas. It Top needs up the gas. Gas? Okay, no. It's yeah. oil. And oh, I forgot cars take oil, right? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. If I forgot. you see okay. this sign, what is it trying to tell you? The answer is the hood is not closed. Something has collided with the windscreen. The windscreen is loose, the bonnet is not closed, or there's something unexpected underneath the bonnet. Okay, so this is obviously British again, because the bonnet for us is the hood of the car. Um, It's got to be, it looks like the hood of the car is open. That's the picture. So I'm going to say the bonnet is not closed. Very good. Two right. Okay, good. Yeah, well, that one's obvious. (sighs) If you see this sign, what does it mean? The answer is washer fluid refill. Fountain ahead. Washer fluid reminder. Fuel tank leak. Or top off the gas. Maybe this one's top off the gas, because I so far I have not been able to top off the gas. I get that one wrong every time. You got it wrong again. Uh, But it looks like a gas gauge. That's a windshield wiper. No, it... What does the gas gauge look like on the left? What does is this empty? What does this symbol mean? The answer: the fog lights are on. The fog lights are on. The back fog lights are on. Brake pads are okay. Or there's a green light. Go. Okay, so the car is not going to tell you that there's a green light. So let's take that one out. Okay. It doesn't make any sense. But it's green, so there's money, which means it has to be the most expensive thing. So. I'm going to say, so it's not going to tell you the brake pads are okay, because that's not going to cost you anything. Um, let's go that's with... That's not going to cost the, you anything. Oh, yeah, if they're okay. You're right. Yeah, they're yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So I've ruled that out. So it's either the front fog lights are on or the back fog lights are on. Um, I don't know which way the car is supposed to be. you can see the front fog lights, though. That's the problem. Oh. Okay, so the back fog lights are on. <laughs> No, There's no such positive. thing as back fog lights. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why would there be back fog lights? Because <laughs> you have what's what's a fog light? I mean, if you know if it's foggy, you need all all hands on deck. You need lights everywhere, don't you? <laughs> no. So you, you got two right. You, you cannot drive. You failed. Again, I don't understand why they have to do little symbols. Why can't it just say, aren't we at a place now where the car can text you? Hey, I need more wiper fluid. Hey, Coop, sorry to bother you. Could you could you fill up my gas on your way home? You know what I mean? Like, the car should be able to text you. 
sometimes even cars like mine now will pop up an error that says A364 problem. Oh, no. Then you got to look up. So you just Google A364 and figure it out. Okay. Why it got to say A634? Why can't it just say tires low? Write the word tires and low. That's it. No, because you get a little symbol and you should know what that is. You should read your owner's manual from front to back and you should know everything. Well, that sounds really passive aggressive. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Like if you want me to be on top of the car and take care of her, she should be able to tell me what she needs. It's 2022. No, she tells you what she needs. No, she ever tells you what she needs. You you have to figure it out. (laughs) She will give you symbols on what the problem is, but never will she come out and tell you what is wrong. That's how you know the cars the cars are girls right there. Because they're not gonna come out and say, no. Hey, my boot is open. You know, they're gonna be like, symbol. Don't you know what the symbol means? If and you, you got to me, figure it out. Yeah, if you loved me, you'd know what my symbols mean. Yep. So true. Never do they tell you what's wrong. You have right. to figure it out. You have to at least Google it to figure it out what it is. That's right. All cars are girls. <laughs> will you shut your mouth? The Cooper and Anthony Show. Ellen DeGeneres is in some hot water this week. Uh, like, uh, sorry, it's a it's a day ending with why. I feel like Ellen DeGeneres does not know how to get out of her her own She's way at still this point. On TV, I thought that's over. It is, but they. So she didn't renew. She has to finish out her last season, which is what she's doing right now. I thought this was like three years ago. We talked about this. I thought she was already off the air. Well, no, she's she did. She was she had a contract that went through 2022. Mm -hmm. Once the contract is over, she's not renewing for 2023. She's done. She's gone. Got it. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. I was just having a conversation about her today. Before we get to this um, story that we're talking about today, the Jacob Elordi story, which is really interesting, by the way, when we get to it. I have a friend that works at Ellen. And this friend of mine has been there since the very beginning and has told me that Ellen's not the most approachable person. Mm. You know, she's not the... We've heard over the years that she's not the nicest person. And I think... When the whole thing blew up with her last year, where people were like, she's a nightmare. She treats people like crap. She's abusive. Nobody in the industry was surprised. The only thing that kind of surprises me is like, you know, you look at her and you think, well, she's living in a $20 million house. She has this gorgeous wife. She has a lot of power in Hollywood. She's a ton of money. What does she have to be bitchy about? I mean, like her life looks pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. She, She looks pretty happy, right? You would think. Right. And then I remember something that a friend of mine said to me. I remember, I, like, in college, there was this girl that I was friends with. And no matter what I did, the girl was just not nice to me. Like, she just treated me like shit. I was so good to her. And she treated me like shit. And at the time, my best friend said to me, just because you don't have everything right now that you want, it doesn't mean that you don't have everything that she wants. Mm-hmm. Like, she looks at you and thinks... You have everything, and you're like, no, I don't have this. Like, you're unhappy. There's a whole bunch, there's a whole list of stuff that you don't have in your life. But to her, you have everything she wants. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the case with Ellen DeGeneres. I think that we look at her and think, who wouldn't want all the money that she has? Who wouldn't want the beautiful wife and the $20 million house and all the power? The answer is, I think that's not really what her goal was. I'm not trying to understand. I'm trying to understand Ellen a little bit just in terms of like, I know there's a lot of hate coming her way. And when you hear the story, we're going to tell you there's definitely going to be more. And I, and I, I'm one of them. But when you look at it, like objectively, like I don't have a dog in this fight. When you look at it objectively, I think that she set out to be a sitcom actress, a movie actress, a stand up comedian. She didn't want to be a talk show host. That was not her goal. Mm -hmm. I think that she wasn't doing well. Remember, her sitcom was canceled when she came out. Nobody in Hollywood wanted to work with her. She wanted to be an actress. She had she had other goals for herself. I feel like the talk show the talk show host thing was something that she did 
because she wasn't offered the job she really wanted. And I think on some level, she may have thought, and I'm completely speculating, I have no inside information. I think that she took the talk show gig thinking this will endear her to the people that she wants to hire her. It'll it'll bring her into that world again. Bring her clout score a little bit higher than it was before. Right. And show people that she's more than just that one sitcom. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more to her than that. And I think that it just snowballed. I think the show started doing well and she just stuck with it. And she was making a lot of money and she couldn't say no. And she was employing, now she's employing hundreds of people. You know, how do you say to hundreds of people, sorry, want to do movies, bye. Mm. You can't. That's that's their livelihood. So I think once she became part of that really corporate world, it's a it's a corporate job. She might be on TV, but there's, it's, it's very corporate. Um, I think she was on that treadmill and in that cycle. And I think she... That was not her goal. That was, I don't think that's what she wanted to do with her life and her career. Yeah. Cause if you're a stand up, you can be a bitch or an asshole all you want. People expect right. it. I mean, like Sam Kennison was a nightmare to deal with off the stage. You put him on stage, he's great. Take him off the stage, a complete nightmare. So if you put Sam Kennison on TV, that he has to be there every day, he was an asshole before. Right. And now you expect them not to be an asshole. They're going to be an asshole no matter what. Yeah, I mean, she her stand-up was fantastic. If you don't know Ellen DeGeneres' stand-up very well, if you only know her current Netflix special, I, I suggest you go back and you watch the videos of her phone calls to God. They're brilliant. It's really the thing that put her on the map. Yeah, she had two good bits, and, and that's what put her on the map. But they were really good bits. Yeah. So, right. but like I said, you could be a jerk and be thrown up on stage and make people laugh for 45 minutes. But if you, if you have to show up at work every day and do a show and hundreds of people rely on it, that's a, that's a big job. Yeah. Right. I think her timing was bad. I think for what she wanted to do with her career, she was way ahead of her time. That's why she was not going to be accepted by the Hollywood community mm. and the talk show thing was really blowing up at that point. They were throwing people on talk shows like crazy and some made it like she did and some didn't like Queen Latifah, you know? So it's just, I think it's really interesting that when you look at her and you're like, how can you be unhappy? Your life is amazing. Not to her. I think that's not the goal that she had. So just as an effort to try to understand her anyway. So what happened today was, so you don't watch euphoria, do you? I don't know what that is. What? I don't know what that is. Okay. Wow. Um, Euphoria is pretty much like the number one show on HBO right now. It's <sighs> Here we go. Huge. Every time it's a number one. It's the biggest show ever, number one show. Okay, I'm not watching it. No. <sighs> okay. It's not just one of the hugest shows for HBO. It is written about constantly in everything from like... BuzzFeed and The Cut and The New York Times and Vogue and everyone's doing... There's a whole campaign. Zendaya has a whole campaign right now, a fashion campaign, because she's the star of Euphoria and she's the biggest thing on the planet. Um, Jacob Elordi, who's one of the leads, he he plays one of the one of the main characters. He was dating uh, Kai Gerber, you mm -hmm. know, Cindy Crawford's gorgeous daughter. Uh, they had broken up. So... You know, he's one of the leads on the show, and his character is kind of a sociopath. The character is supposed to be, you're supposed to believe, he's very good looking, The Jacob is, but the character is supposed to be really, like a real sex pot. You're supposed to believe that the two hottest girls in school are, like, fighting over him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he breaks up friendships, and his whole family is a really good looking and that's a main it's it's a plot point they just don't it's not like they happen to be good looking it's part of the narrative so most people that watch euphoria and it's a really edgy show um zendaya plays um this character rue who has a drug problem a teenage a teenager with a really bad drug problem so it's it's a very very dark show it's not i'm making it sound like light and fun and girls fighting but it's it's very dark and very deep and they deal with a lot of adult issues um there's some controversy right now as to what age you should allow kids to watch euphoria 
you know, under the age of 15, probably not, you know, but I guess it depends on the kid. Anyway, so Jacob Elordi, one of the one of the stars of the show, is always naked because he's always having sex with somebody. Mm-hmm. And or he's always shirtless or topless. And it's because his character would be, you know. So Ellen DeGeneres decided to ask him about it. But remember, she's a boomer. So the way she talks to somebody like him, who's he's 24. So he's Gen Z. So they they have a, there's a there's a real communication gap here. This is like three generations away, you know, from each other. So. I want you to hear the conversation and then I will describe his body language. And you're naked a lot. How does that yeah. feel? Is that something when they when they write the, you into the script, do they say, hey, how do you feel about being naked? Or you just all of a sudden are surprised like, oh, I have to be naked. You kind of, you, you have no choice. Right. You know? It's like every scene is like, he sleeps with this person. He does this with this person naked. But it's like, it gets to the point, I've done some movies where it gets to the point where it's like, he goes to the mall shirtless. And you're like, why? <laughs> what would you possibly like? Well, need because it? look at you. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Um, uh, right there. He, she said that to him, and he immediately got very uncomfortable. Both his arms came in over his body. He leans in, takes a sip of his drink. Like you can see, he's six five, and he immediately shrunk to being tiny. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't pick up on how awkward and and weird that question was she keeps at it but i just was wondering because you know for for women i mean i think they probably would ask a woman like do you mind being naked you know on camera whatever Mm. but i'm just wondering if they they ask you or if you just are surprised that you when you open the script and and also like you said you're comfortable now because you've done it enough that you you aren't uncomfortable being naked well i think on euphoria it comes with the territory of the character so i'm kind of you know he's just ultra masculine macho jock so the, those guys i think tend to get around pretty shirtless so it's it's sort of okay and we have an intimacy coordinator her name's ma'am and she's like an, she's a second mother she's like are you are you comfortable are you okay to the point where you're like yeah, yeah mm-hmm. i'm fine and the crew has been the same from the first season through the second season so it's kind of it's like getting naked in front of your family yeah you know? <laughs> Which also is weird. Which is weird. Yeah, just, it's always just weird. Just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. In this country, that's weird. I don't know what Australia is. Yeah. Weird. So, you know, you could see he's very uncomfortable. He keeps crossing and crossing his legs, and he's, like, got his hands over his face. And, you know, the whole, the whole thing, it's a, it's a weird conversation for the two of them to have. And the way that she sexualized him was like, well, look at you. You know, as if you look like that... So it's, you should be naked. And that really backfired on her because they're, they're like think pieces being written today about how her sexualizing him is just as bad as when women get sexualized. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter the gender. You shouldn't sexualize a person. And the fact that she has not gotten the memo that's saying to anybody of any generation, well, look at you. Like, because you look like that, you deserve to be sexualized. We should take her off TV. Oh, they're doing that anyway. Oh, darn. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why that's going to happen. Yeah, she says to him at the end, you know, I'd say come back, but, you know, this is pretty much it. (laughs) (laughs) I am going to have nowhere to go after this. So, yeah. We can talk on Zoom. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cooper and Anthony Show. These people are obviously total lunatics. <laughs> Muy comico. If your brand new husband does any of these things, would you file for divorce? Okay, let's hear it. Okay, they clap every time the plane lands. Oh, that's a divorceable. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's something. You can bring that to a judge and say, listen, Your Honor, he claps when the plane lands. Every and that's single it. time. Bang in the ga- yeah, bang in the gavel. So you're, you're saying divorce. Okay. They chew super loud with their mouth open. Nah. You know, let me tell you what I learned about that. Okay, here's a lesson. If you're single and you're wondering if the guy you're dating is good in bed and like good at oral sex, watch the way they eat. 
if they eat neatly and properly, they're terrible in bed. Any guy that shoves food in his mouth, don't you remember from Sex in the City, Mr. Pussy? You know what I mean? He would take a piece of fruit and be like, mm-hmm. and it was disgusting, but you were like, wow, well, they called him Mr. Pussy because he was great at eating pussy. Like, they love that about him. So a guy that eats with his mouth open and sloppy, you don't like it at the table, but you'll love it in bed. 53% of people said divorce, get out. <laughs> nope, nope, they are, they are wrong, as, as wrong as the day is long. They insist they don't want French fries, but they eat all of your fries. Stay together, divorce. Well, women do that all the time. Do you know how often oh. I go out to dinner with my boyfriend, I'm like, I'm just going to have a salad, and then he's like, okay, I'll just have a burger, and they're like, do you want fries with that? And he looks at me, and I'm like, yeah, you want fries. <laughs> yeah. So yes, you want fries. <laughs> 71% of people said that's that's fine. You can do that. But I love yeah, how you, you, 29% of people said that's, that's it. I'm filing for divorce. Divorceable, yeah. They scream every time they sneeze. Who screams and sneezes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Every single time they sneeze, they scream. Divorce, like stay together. Like a cartoon together. character? Yeah. I have never seen that in real life. I don't know anybody that screams and sneezes. I've never seen that. So if they do it, are you, <laughs> are you staying with them or are you divorcing them? I don't think people actually do that. Oh, okay. So I'm staying with them because that's not a thing. They eat food off your plate without asking. No, that's endearing. That's sweet. That means, oh, that means they really love you. They talk... During every movie. <sighs> yeah. Um, uh, hmm. yeah. That's a tough one. Every time the movie starts, they got to talk and they're not talking about the movie. They're talking about other things. Oh, yeah. I mean, am, am I into the movie? If yes. I'm into the movie, You're that's all... annoying. Oh. Have you ever watched a movie that you weren't into? No. Plenty of times. No, because you would stop it and start another movie that you were into. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, so yeah, I guess that's a divorceable. Divorceable. 36% of people said divorce. That's it. They spoil yeah. your favorite TV show for you. Okay, that's an issue that Joe and I have, by the way. Don't tell him I'm telling you about this because he hates this. So what will happen is I'll watch something he's already seen He doesn't spoil it by saying, oh, look, here comes the part where he murders her. He doesn't do that. But he'll be like, oh, wait, pay attention because this next part's going to be really important. It's like, don't don't narrate the show to me. Just go in the other room and let me watch it. Either watch it with me. Like, let's watch things together for the first time. Or you go sit in the living room. Yeah. So you're going to say stay together because you're still with him. That's true. Yeah, you're right. So 51% of people said stay together. Okay. They never wash their hands after the bathroom. How would I know? I'm not in there with him. Every time you see him come out, never washes his hands. I don't know what he's doing in there. I don't know if he's washed his hands or not. I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to assume he has because this is a guy that as soon as he comes in from his day, he washes his hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, he's he's a big hand washer. My guess is he probably washes them after touching anything in the bathroom. 77% of people said divorce. That's a divorceable act. That's a divorceable act. It's disgusting. That's how that's how everybody gets COVID right yeah, there. Yeah, I know. You got the poopy on your on your hands and then you you he touches your hair. Uh they're always late for everything. Nah, that's not a divorceable thing. You know, there's some people they just always are. They you don't know how time both works. Are late for everything. Yeah, right. That's I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> you both are. Let me tell you how funny that is. I made plans today to meet my friend for coffee, and he's like, "What time do you want to meet?" And I said, "Ah, two ish." So he's like, he writes back. He's like, "So three then?" <laughs> and you showed up like, at three ten. You- I showed up at 310. (laughs) I said two-ish. So I said two-ish. So he got there. He said, I got there at 303 and you got there at 310 and the plan was (laughs) two-ish. That doesn't surprise me. Well, he knows me. (laughs) That doesn't surprise me at all. They clip their nails and let the clippings fly wherever they want. Oh, that's divorce. That's a divorceable that's, act. That does that does not go down in this house. Yeah, fifty three percent of people said that's it. We're done. I love that. Yeah. Twenty six thousand people voted divorce. Yeah, because think about it like this: you walk barefoot around your house and you step on something sharp, and it's the other person's nails. Yuck! Oh, that's gross. 
they make a big dramatic announcement that they're quitting social media every few months. You mean like Kanye West does? <laughs> <laughs> like everybody does now. No, but nobody actually does it except for Kanye West, and he keeps coming back. He, so he keeps coming back. They always correct your grammar. You know, I think that happens early in relationships. Once you've been dating a long time, they don't even pay attention to anything you say. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, because I got a text this week, and it said, uh, you you are, but it's your. And, uh-huh. and I corrected it and said, you are. And I got asshole. <laughs> What? I corrected your grammar. Right. You, well, you corrected, you corrected her spelling. That's her not really spe- grammar. Right, her spelling. They look at their phone every time you have a serious conversation. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> it's annoying, but everybody does it. Like, I would say it's a divorceable act, except for the fact that literally everybody does that. 88% of people said divorce. Yeah, you know, it was funny. The other day, I was telling my boyfriend something super important, and he was on his iPad. I was like, hello, I'm over here. I'm trying to tell you something important, and you're going to tell me tomorrow that you don't know. Like, you're going to ask me about this, and I'm telling you now. Like, you're going to ask me questions, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you, I told you all this yesterday, and I'm not going to repeat myself. Every single time you ask them what to eat, they say, I don't know. Nah, that's every couple. That's every couple. Okay, stay together, 85%. 